Let's have a quick look at oil prices because the June contract, WTI, was up something like 2% this week. And you can see the price um, still shy of $84. Now, apparently U.S. crude stockpiles, according to the report this week, have fallen to the lowest since January. And Bloomberg reckons that if you look at um, patterns in the futures markets, such as the WTI cash roll and the time spreads, both are pointing to supply constraints. Now, the roll is a measure of supply-demand balances in Oklahoma, Cushing, that gigantic storage site. And it has climbed to the highest in two years. And then the so-called prompt spread has strengthened to 72 cents in backwardation, which is uh, wider than last week. So there may be signs of supply tightness. Well, let's switch now to oil equities. Chevron, holding its own today, but Exxon was down. Uh, Chevron was dropped at the beginning of the day and made back the losses throughout the session, but Exxon stayed under pressure. Exxon missed on profit, and Chevron forecast less revenue than the markets were hoping for. Our guest says, don't bet against these energy giants in the long term. David McIlvany is CEO and Portfolio Manager at McIlvany Financial Companies. And David, thanks very much indeed. Just walk us through what Exxon told investors today and why they might have been disappointed. Well, I think with oil prices getting back towards $90 a barrel, the expectations in the marketplace are pretty high. And so with weaker quarterly results, you know, there's there's definitely a disappointment. And I, I think that that will materialize into lower prices, maybe a retest of some of the moving averages. And you know that trend, at least in the very short run, is negative. But I would not bet against either ExxonMobil or Chevron Texaco, you know, you've you've got companies with a very attractive profiles in terms of their barrel of oil equivalent. You've got Chevron at nine dollars and twenty three cents, Exxon Mobil at ten ninety nine, and that ten ninety nine is prior to integration of of the Pioneer assets, so likely to come down. And of course, I think if Chevron is able to pull off the Hess uh, integration, that that merger, if that is to happen then that'll help their numbers as well. So, you know, these are companies that are giving Saudi Arabia a run for their money in terms of production costs. Mm. And with Guyana, um, you know, over the next couple of years coming on, uh, again, I wouldn't bet against the companies. And certainly in this environment, we're one news headline away from 95 to $110 a barrel. And, you know, these companies are, are frankly printing money. Um, what was that 1099 number you gave us there, David? <laughs> Yeah, so when you factor in their oil production and natural gas production, your barrel of oil equivalents, that's for ExxonMobil. 1099 is where they're at pre-Pioneer, and Chevron's 923, uh, so slightly more attractive. Uh, but both will be improved if if those mergers you know, materialize. For Pioneer, of course, it's already done, but as, as they integrate those assets in, uh, you'll see the barrel of oil equivalent production for ExxonMobil coming down as well. And I'm sorry, those are margins per barrel. Uh, no, th- we're talking about their costs. Wow. Their costs per barrel. So they're able to produce a barrel of oil at what about eleven dollars as their cost yeah, base? Yeah, of course. Think of think of the considerable benefit for uh, natural gas. Think of think of the um, huge benefits that that accrues. You know, not only at low natural gas prices, but on any uptick in natural gas, uh, they they see uh, a significant benefit. So when you think about the barrel of oil equivalent, it's important to keep in mind there's there's multiple components there. Um, you know, in, in in terms of their total production profile, energy production profile, part of that is natural gas, a part of that is oil. Um, what what about this uh, tussle over those assets off Guyana? Is that a big deal? Um, it's intriguing, isn't it? Exxon says we have dibs on that, but Chevron wanted Hess because of it. Uh, exactly, and, and and it's a great asset. You know, at 1.3 million barrels per day over the next couple of years, wow. and with Exxon Mobil keeping their books fairly closed in terms of of what their cost of production is. I, I think they know that it's printing money. And you know they'd like to keep it out of out of the out of the marketplace, so to say. Yeah, it is interesting their tactic. I think it's a, some some something of a stall tactic. I don't think that they'll actually be able to to block Chevron's purchase of Hex or, or of, of Hess. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
so you know i'm actually not sure what they're trying to accomplish there because right of first refusal would imply that they could step in and buy it but they've not indicated any interest in actually picking up the asset they don't have the resources they don't have the liquidity to to pull off um, buying Hess or Hess's assets there uh, off the coast of Guyana in the Shabak. So uh, it's it, it appears to be just a, a sort of posturing. Okay. What about gold? What are you seeing there? I'm just checking gold on the week. It looks like gold lost about two percent this week. Um, is it is it a buy at this stage? Well, it depends on what your time frame is. I think if you're talking about a short-term perspective, you know, we had a significant breakout at 21, 2200, and for us to retest or backtest that breakout would be very normal. And so I would I would hesitate to buy at these levels knowing that the COT reports, the commitment of traders reports would argue for it being fairly overbought. Um, that's a very short term perspective. If you take the longer term view, even 12 or 24 months, I think you're talking about the price moving towards three, four thousand dollars an ounce. So, you know, there's a there's a fairly bulletproof case for higher prices. Uh, but we did move pretty far, pretty fast, and and from a technical sta technical standpoint, to see a, a significant breakout like this, to have it retested, totally normal. So, you know, would you be disappointed buying it at 2,300 and change on its way to 2,150, in the short run? Uh, extend your time frame. I think you'd be perfectly happy to own it at either price.